Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the edit page. This is where the magic really happens and where things start getting made. Additive synthesis uses sine waves on top of sine waves to create interference patterns that make really any sounds you could imagine. And the modular setup inside of the edit page for Loom 2 makes things really easy and intuitive to get interesting and awesome sounds. The sounds that are coming out of Loom 2 are lush, they're thick, they're really just brilliant, and it's hard to get something similar anywhere else. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. We're gonna walk through some of the new features, look at them in depth, and we're actually gonna build a patch ourselves. And along the way, we're gonna check out a few of the presets that have come in the package. There's over 350, there's a bunch of new ones, there's a bunch of old ones, but those old ones have been remastered to use some of the new modules inside of Loom 2. So let's go ahead and check it out. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through what's new. I'm gonna walk you through some of the presets to show you what this is capable of. But before we do any of that, I'm gonna play you this piece of music that I made very, very quickly. And every single sound you hear inside of this piece of music is being generated by Loom 2. And another thing that's really cool about it is these are all presets. Some of them are a little tweaked, but for the most part, the base form of the preset is what's being used inside of this demonstration. So let's go ahead and listen. It's about a minute and 15 seconds. So if you want to skip forward through it, you're welcome to do that. And we'll jump into the modules and what's new at that time. But if you want to listen to what Loom 2 is capable of, I think this is a pretty good starting spot. So let's go ahead and check this out. Okay, so that again was all generated. Every single sound inside of there was generated using Loom 2's presets and a little bit of tweaking, but for the most part, all Loom 2 presets. So I hope that gives you a good idea what the synth is capable of. And what's even crazier is that it's an additive synth. And this type of synthesis uses sine waves. It only uses sine waves, but makes them interfere with one another. And using that interference pattern creates pretty much any sound imaginable. Every sound you just heard was made by interfering sine waves. So that's just mind blowing. And this type of synthesis is generally pretty complicated and pretty math heavy, but Loom 2 makes it very accessible for any level. So a beginner can generate really great sounds. It has over 350 presets. And by the way, some of those presets are from Loom 1, but each one of the presets has been updated to use the new algorithms and the new features inside of Loom 2. So they sound bigger and better. It's not like they just got transferred in. Each one was meticulously uh, repurposed for Loom 2. For the people who really want to get in and start doing their own stuff, I think you'll find Loom 2 more than flexible enough for any level of detail you might want to have added to your particular sounds. So let's go ahead and bring up a new instance of Loom 2. I'm going to come in to the default sound. So additive synthesis, as I said before, is sine waves. And if you add side waves on top of sine waves, you get different types of waves because of the interference pattern. So if we look at the heart of the synthesizer itself, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this one module. If we come over here to the spectral distortion and come down to the type and put it on to root and then take the depth and move it all the way to the right. 
you'll see that we have a sine wave. Now there is that punch there in the beginning that isn't quite smooth sine wave, and that has to do with this gain module over here. I'm not gonna turn it off, but that's where that punchiness is coming from. But I wanted to show you that this is the bass form. Every other sound you hear is taking that root sine wave and manipulating it to get everything out. So if we turn on this other module, the odd even module, That's almost like a saw wave, I think. So the way Loom 2 works is you have what's essentially a modular system. And it's not modular like I can take this module and pick it up and move it over here, but any one of these panels can be any one of the modules. And there are over 30 modules. You know, if you jump in here, we've got basic, filtering, effects, rhythmical, time, tools, and wave-based. So let's go ahead and just choose one of the new modules, which is the five signs module. Let's just go ahead and choose another module to keep making a nice new sound. Discrete Adder is another new module. Let's go ahead and add that. And you can see it's giving us a little bit of a tingy feel to it. And if we don't know what any of the modules are actually doing and what the perimeters are, all you have to do is hit this little eye inside of the circle and you'll get all the information you need. Unlike the normal adder, the part of the spectrum affected is not brought up entirely, but only certain partials of it. You can come in and there's quite a bit of information for each one of the modules. And that's a good way to get a better understanding of what each one of them are doing if you're gonna get in and start making your own sounds. So let's go ahead and over here and let's just put on a basic filter. If I go ahead and solo that, just that track. So we've only used five of the available modules. We put on a little bit of effect there and we already have a decent sound coming out. And one of the other new things inside of Loom 2 is the ability to add octaves. We have negative one octave or negative two octaves. And this is gonna generate a subharmonic at one octave below whatever is being played or two octaves below or both if you wanna get really thick sounds. So let's go ahead and add, let's say negative two to this particular patch. So those are really nice features, especially when you're trying to get a really thick pad or something or a thick lead. We have a number of AHDSR envelopes down here, three total. We have a slope envelope. We have three LFOs. Any of these parameters can be sent to any of those things. So if example, we want to add one more module here. Let's put on a um, rhythmic phrase and see what this does. And as that was being played, we might have been getting some clipping and that's a good time to turn on the limiter because this is additive synthesis, right? So sometimes when I add a new module, we're actually gonna be getting more sound put into the system, which can create clipping and you don't want clipping, right? Clipping's bad, so just turn on the limiter and you'll be fine. But if you don't want any distortion or anything like that, it's a good idea to just go ahead and turn down the level. <music> And as I was saying before, we can choose an LFO. Let's choose LFO1 and LFO1 down here, and we can send this at any amount to the LFO1. So we can go negative or we can go positive values. All the way over is gonna be a full send to that LFO. <music> I'm actually surprised at how good this sound already is. I mean, I'm just doing this for this tutorial, but that is a really nice sounding patch already.
So if that isn't enough to get you excited about Loom 2, I'm not really sure what is. Oh wait, yes I do, presets. Let's jump into those. Like I said, there's over 350, and a good place to start is inside of the first bank called Meet Loom 2. And this has a collection or sample from all these other banks all right inside of here. So look at this as kind of like a broad range of what is possible with Loom 2. And as you can see here, we have 184 different types of sounds, and they go everywhere. There are bells, pads, effects, rhythmic, craziness, lush atmospheres, just really anything you want. So let's go ahead and check out this pumping fuzz lead. Well, that's pretty gnarly. Really, really nice sub there. Really interesting rhythmic sounds. One of the most realistic organs inside of a VST you can possibly get, and that's because organs actually use additive synthesis, and this being an additive synthesizer, emulating organs is gonna be like this particular plug's forte, right? One other thing I wanna draw your attention to as far as sound generation is the random button right here. If I go ahead and click this, everything is gonna get randomized. So that's one way to get interesting ideas or starting points is just hitting that random button until you get something that's maybe close to what you want or maybe exactly what you want. I find myself going to it because 350 presets is quite a lot to go through and sometimes just hitting that random button is going to give you one of the best patches you've ever heard in your life. Now the random button actually works in a different capacity and that is, let's say I kind of like this particular module layout, I can actually hold shift and hit the random button and it's gonna keep the panels the same or the modules in the same sort of sequence but move all the parameters inside of the modules. And as you can see, even though those modules are the same, we've got vastly different results from the random button. So that's actually a very quick look at the edit page. In the next video, we're gonna be checking out the morph page and the wave page, where you can now import not one, but two different wave files into Loom to use for synthesis. I'll see you in that video.